Everything here burned in 17. It was down there on the home ranch. You just leaning into the wind. It was holding you upright. The thing was moving at 100 yards every second. It was tragic. Tragic what happened to people's lives and their homes and their households. And it was tragic to see what happened to this landscape. I've traveled around the world with Wild Strongholds for several years now. This time I'm truly excited to come home to the place that means so much to me. Where I grew up, where I learned to hunt, and the place that made me the conservationist I am today. My name's Ed Hudson. I spent my whole life on this ranch. It was where I learned to hunt and where I learned to be outdoors. It taught me a lot about conservation and how conservation should happen. Combination of agriculture and hunting and general wildland management. Ranch is here in Napa County. It's where I was raised, and I've spent my whole life here in Napa County. The ranch itself has a very long history, all the way from Native American times to present. Historically, it was a cattle ranch for many generations. Since the time of the Spanish, they would raise cows and sheep here. It wasn't until the turn of the century that people started growing grapes on the ranch. Prohibition came around and sort of stopped that. It really wasn't until dad showed up in, in 81 that the ranch was transformed into what it is today. 10% of the ranch is currently under either cultivation or inhabited. The rest of it is open space. When dad bought the place, there wasn't an oak tree on it that was under 100 years old. And one of the first things that dad did and that we still continue to do here today was pull, I mean, every single cow off the grazing land. In doing that, it allowed the land to repair itself. We started getting the young oaks coming back up again and things began to rehabilitate. Then we started putting cows in on a more limited basis than they had been used historically. Historically, the rangeland had been so heavily overgrazed, there was nothing left but old trees and a little bit of grass. Today, we graze more than we used to. Part of that is a rangeland management technique because of the horrible fires that we've had here in California.
Everything here burned in 17. It was down there on the home ranch. It was like 1 o'clock in the morning. You were just leaning into the wind. It was holding you upright. The damn thing was moving at 100 yards every second. For like a week, the thing just kept moving all over this valley. And I mean, you'd hear when it hit a, hit a propane tank on somebody's house and just go boom. We lost just about everything in 17. And it was really sad to see. You know, the ranch will never look the same again. You know, the turkeys, which is what we're hunting now this time of year, this spring is our first really official turkey hunt since 2017. They took a little longer to come back than the deer did. I mean, in part because the deer ran further and were able to get out the way, even though we lost a lot of the deer population. There were still some healthy population here even after the fire. The turkeys, there's only one little spot on the ranch where they were that, that they still lived on the ranch because everything else got burned out. The turkeys couldn't get away from the fire. But there was about five or six toms and about 20 hens that made it. And here now, there's 20 toms just on one section of the ranch. It has been interesting to see this environment recover from that fire. It's changed how we hunt it. It has changed how we've managed it. turkeys on this ranch are Rio Grands. They were introduced to California back in the 50s as part of a program in partnership with the California Department of Fish and Game. It was a very successful program. They tried to introduce turkeys back in the turn of the century in the early 1900s by bringing turkeys up from Mexico, Gould's turkeys, and breeding them here in barns and then releasing them. And after trying that for 20, 25 years, they entirely unsuccessful. I think there's a small population still down in maybe Santa Barbara. It wasn't until the invention of the net cannon that they were able to really be successful in moving turkeys from one location to another. They were able to capture whole groups of wild turkeys that knew how to survive knew how to sleep in trees, nest on the ground, stay out of the way of predators. And that program started in the 50s here in California. The turkeys that were proliferated most readily here in the northern part of the Bay Area were Rio Grande's. There's a hen that hangs out right in here. She's got a nest in this little spot. Oh, right there, that's where I shot my first coyote when I was 11. The reason you can slam doors when you're turkey hunting, sometimes it's a really good way to find out where the turkeys are. I'm going to hunt this for the first time, and there's been so many birds, and I'm just excited. When I was a kid, I was, well, I couldn't have been much more than about five or six years old. I can remember my dad coming back to the house, all excited, and he'd seen turkey, one tom and two hens. He was just so excited, and I, oh, I was a little kid. I didn't, well, what's a turkey? What's it look like? Well, we went over it. So by the time I was, well, I couldn't have been much more than 10 or 11, there was enough turkeys on the ranch to hunt. 
and that was really outside of hunting quail with pellet gun. That was the first animal I really hunted on my own here. And I've just, I've always loved it. These are Indian matates. What would have happened historically is they would have gone around, the Native Americans here, collected the acorns in the fall, gathered them up, and then brought them here. They'd have a grinding stone. They'd put the acorns in that hole and grind, and this is how they'd make acorn flour. The Native Americans who lived here were hunter-gatherers. The stream right down here would have, in the wintertime, provided them with a source of fresh fish, steelhead, probably a few salmon. So they would have come up here in the fall and spent the winter up here in summer camps and go down to the coast. I mean, there's so much food here. Everywhere you look is food. There's probably <laughs> somewhere between 25 and 30 toms down here. Everything from little tiny jakes to young birds that have, you know, between six and eight inch beards on them. There's a couple of 10 inchers and there's some really older birds that have the, the snood that's starting to get long. Yeah right around us. This little area behind this hill, they like to spend a lot of time in the morning strutting and trying to get on, on hens. And you can see they come up in this. turkeys this time of year, they're really split up. Normally what you see is big groups of turkeys, sometimes as many as 50. And right now, seeing groups of two, three, four males, one or two females. Sometimes you see a little bit larger group. 
mostly you start looking for them in the, in the low fields or on the benches low down on the hills first thing in the morning. And then you work your way higher into the hills towards the afternoon. There's a couple of different ways to hunt turkeys, but one of which is to find big toms after 5 p.m. From 5 p.m. until dark, you cannot hunt turkeys here in California. They're making their way to their roosts. They're making their way to their areas where they feel safe. And so one of the things to do is to stay well back from them and to watch the birds or get down into an area where you think the birds are headed and sit and listen to where they go to roost at night. Once you've ascertained where the birds are gonna roost that night, you make a plan for the next morning to be in a good position to call them and bring them in as they come off the roost in the morning. So this is that group of birds we saw before. But it's nothing that we're looking for. They're nice birds though. birds are young. These all make really good birds next year. Really good birds next year.
beard is worn down. Oh, that's for sure. That's no young bird. He's coming all the way around left to us. That is turkey hunting. All right. Old, old, old bird. This is a really old bird. His spurs are about worn down to nothing. Very, very old bird. Oh, that's great. It's a really old bird. All this secondary growth underneath on this bottom part here. Great day. Started out very early, got into some birds right, right first thing in the morning there. Had them all around us, all directions. Really, really a lot of fun. Had birds in the decoy. I made a decision not to shoot because I was kind of enjoying it and I didn't really want to mess it up. And also the birds there were great birds, but not, not what I was looking for. A lot of those birds were younger birds. We worked real hard the rest of the day, got deep into the ranch, made a call. Sure enough, there was a bird and started working him, got a little closer, he got hung up on a fence. Push comes to shove, it was a lot of calling. In the end, we got him to, to get off that fence, fly over the fence and come straight at us. And then sure enough, you know, okay, cool, he's gonna come right at us, he's coming from the left, he's gonna come right out in front of us straight to Henrietta, the decoy. No, that didn't happen. He decided to circle around behind us and so then there was a complete, oh, I mean, it was just a cluster. It's exciting, you know, you can't predict what a turkey's going to do. And the minute I think you start making plans for turkeys and you're unable to adjust, you'll be in deep trouble. You've got to adjust. Very happy. The bird we've got is really a wonderful example of the the type of birds that I've always hunted here in the middle of the ranch. A little over a nine inch beard, very old, his spurs are worn down to nothing.
It has been so nice to finally turkey hunt again. It's been a long time coming and to see the way that everything's come back from the fires in 17, to be here now in 22, to be able to hunt turkeys again like I did as a kid was, was really a, a real treat. And I'm so lucky and so fortunate to have this as part of my life and to have it as part of my life again. How to, uh, how to cross a fence 101. It's kind of a, a variation on a trick my dad showed me. It works, but he's got a much bigger hat than mine. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that's a little hot. Ooh, I can feel it in my thumb though. <laughs> it was like, there was like this little pulse you could feel, it's like, it was, it was exciting. 